in the West, TikTok under the weather, and what it means for developing economies. Canadian government has decided to ban the use of the China-based app TikTok on government-issued devices, citing unacceptable level of risk to privacy and security. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau termed the move as a first step and added, many Canadians, businesses, and private individuals will reflect on the security of their own data and perhaps make choices in consequence. Canada's Treasury Board has declared that the TikTok's data collection provide considerable access to the contents of the phone. Yet, it has not found clear evidence of government information being compromised. Moreover, White House has also directed all federal agencies to eliminate the app from federal devices within 30 days. And now, let us break down what could these moves mean in the near future for platform, interstate relations, and business-to-business -business relations between other foreign entities, and if there is a way out. As those questions are addressed, it is important to consider that TikTok is among the top 10 leading apps globally. First, the ongoing measures against TikTok are reflective of similar apprehensions raised by different Western countries. Previously, we told you the Australian government's decision to review Chinese-made surveillance cameras at government buildings was also indicative of a similar move. Second, while concerns regarding possibility of data disclosure to Chinese state and manipulation of app algorithms remain high, some stakeholders are calling for calibrated responses. The American Civil Liberties Union has asked the House Foreign Affairs Committee to not stop free exchange of ideas and to reconsider a proposed legislation which could ban this app. Third, these moves by different governments reflect a broad trend of competition between China and different Western countries that can turn adversarial. Canada, as per reports, has denied, and in some instances, Chinese companies to divest investment in mining operations in Canada. Fourth, as part of similar trends, US, Canada, EU, and other partner countries can condition their foreign investment in other countries to limit or deny access of Chinese companies in associated industries based on fears of data breaches, which would limit countries' ability to balance its relations with China and other Western countries. China could also pose similar conditions in quid pro quo to its own investments in host countries. Fifth, the overall trend could suggest that China and Western countries may engage in such trends leading to an inevitable decoupling of technology and global economies. Sixth, what would countries do to avert such an eventuality? A. Countries could come up with creating data protection regulations and intellectual property protection legislation, which ensures such eventualities can be avoided. B. Countries may carry out diplomatic initiatives and could ask both sides to review policies that hamper development of developing economies and engagement with diverse partners. So far, it appears while China's tensions with West can continue to spiral down, developing economies may have to carry out proactive diplomacy to avoid the worst. I'm Osama Nizamani, and this was your Daily Dispatch.